Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Actually Diet Art by Science, and today I'm going to continue on with our project fleece, where we're going from the fleece to a finished shrug, and uh, we're going to do the spinning process today. Now, first, I wanted to show you um, my old yarn. This is the yarn that I used for the shawl itself, and I'm going to use this as sort of a, uh, a guide. This is what my yarn I want to look like in the very end, but it doesn't have to be exactly like this. The nice thing about the Unishrug is the fact that you can use any kind of beginner yarn. It doesn't even have to be a very consistent gauge. It just it would look a little nicer if it had the consistent gauge, but it's not absolutely necessary. Also, it's not necessary to have a two-ply, but if you want to do a two-ply, I'm going to show you how to do that uh, with my spinning wheel here. And a lot of the things that I'm talking about can also be applied with the drop spindle. You'll just have to do it with a spindle rather than a wheel, so it might take slightly longer. Now, here we go. Oh, see if it'll autofocus. Autofocus? Oh, no, it's not going to autofocus. So, mind my shoulder, if you please. That should about do it. So this is how the yarn looks, and it's pretty bouncy it's because I'm using a very nice high quality merino for it, but it's, you know, kind of lumpy. It's not exactly perfect, which means when you're first starting out and you need a project for all this beautiful new yarn that you're making. Um, this will totally fit the bill because it doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it perfect if you want to, but you don't have to, and that's the, really the key. The second thing that you're probably really going to want to have on hand, unless you just want to go wild and see what you make up, is some kind of spinner's control card. This is completely optional. You do not have to have one. I found this extremely useful in my early days of you know trying to get the right gauge, the whole consistent uh, for a whole consistent uh, skein of yarn, but it's not exactly a needed thing. Um, this one is from VIPFibers.com, but I've also learned that uh, this particular kind with the plastic, clear plastic with the black lines on it, they're, they're kind of rare right now, and I'm not sure there's some kind of hiccup with the, the manufacturing, so you may not be able to find this exact one, but what you can do is they sometimes have paper versions that you can print out on your computer and then you can just take it somewhere like Kinko's or whatever to have it laminated real nice and you can use it in the very similar fashion as, as I'm going to use. Now when we make our yarn we want for this example a two ply and whenever you ply something you have to keep in mind that if you want a finished gauge at a certain number let's say uh, eight wraps per inch you have to double that for the single because when the two come together they're going to make the eight plot or the eight reps per inch so you don't want to make the singles at eight reps per inch because that'll make a really fat poofy yarn when you're done so if we want a finished gauge at around eight reps per inch then we need to make singles that are 16 reps per inch that way when they come together and they ply and they poof up a little bit they'll be around eight reps per inch on my gauge, uh, it's this one here. I know you can't really see the number, but it's the second one from the top. All right, so I'm going to get this started and I'm um, going to start checking after about a yard to make sure that I'm right on, on cue here. And here's the bat that we're going to use. <laughs> They're so soft. <laughs> I tell you, I almost want to buy this sheep because he's so amazingly soft. All right, take that off. Now, there's lots of ways that you can spin this. This is the, the bat that we made in our earlier videos. You can pull it into strips, which is what I'm going to do, but you don't have to necessarily do that. You can take it from one corner and just spin this as it is. Or you can 
kind of roll it up so it's kind of like a, a tube and you, you can spin from this like that. You can also roll it diagonally kind of like you would a crescent roll. Really there, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do with the spinning process um, and I'll leave that up to you to decide but in case you are having a hard time or this is your very first uh, spinning project we're just going to take off a strip it makes it a little bit more manageable. And all I'm going to do is put my fingers through here in this thin spot and then I'm going to just gently pull it apart like that, down the whole thing. Ta-da! You could also leave it attached and then kind of do it a zigzag back and forth so you have one continuous strand but sometimes I like to pull from different sides of the bat as I go depending on how the yarn is looking. I, if I want something a little bit more consistent I can pick from different spots and I'll distribute the, the bling, the stuff that I added on top a little bit more evenly. Um, but again, that's completely up to you. <laughs> so, When I get this started I'm going to pick the end that has a little bit less bling on top because that's probably going to be waste and not seen. So, I've got this, this end here. My uh, wheel is set up for a medium to larger gauge yarn. Now I'm just going to get this threaded onto the leader, like so. So, the spinning that I do here, I'm not really concentrating on the gauge. I'm just trying to get it onto um, the bobbin here. Okay. And normally when you spin, you're going to have a little bit of waste at the beginning, at the end. So I'm not really focused on, on this at all. The other thing I'm checking is to make sure that um, I set my wheel up property, properly. <laughs> Um, I kind of guessed at where it was um, that I wanted it to be, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure I'm happy with that. So, from this point, I'm going to start checking the gauge. Now, what you do is you bring up your uh, your tool. I have a convenient little uh, stretchy thing keeps it around on my wheel. Now, if we want eight wraps per inch, we're going to have to spin singles that are 16 wraps per inch. And what you do is you hold the yarn. so that you can see the gauge. All right? Now what I do, and it may be wrong, but as long as I'm consistently wrong, then it's fine, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> you don't have to do everything 100% right each time. I, when, I hold this, when I hold this up to the gauge to check, what I'm looking for is um, little or no yarn outside of the black line. That's really what I'm looking for. And I can tell from looking at this that the yarn that I have started is about 20 wraps per inch. So it's a little bit thin for what I'm looking for. That would give me about 10 wraps per inch when it's applied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my gauge to be a little thicker. And now I'm going to check it again. Alright, still not quite there. Alright. Already it feels a little bit thick. I'm going to check it. Right. Bang on. As the Brits say, don't they? Now that I'm fairly convinced that this is going to be uh, 16 reps per inch as a single, I'm going to apply it on itself to confirm. Now the reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that um, when I finish spinning the single and I apply it, it's going to be at the proper gauge when I've done the applying and um, when I've done all of the, the setting of the yarn. This part matters more when um, you consider which fiber you're using. If you're using kind of a dense fiber, 
uh, it's not going to poof up very much. But if you're using a really soft, bouncy one like Merino or Cormo or something like that, it's going to puff, puff up a lot more and you'll have to take that into consideration when you're spinning the single. So what I do is I apply it on itself and then I just gently pull down on it a little to make sure that it's going to be at the proper gauge. Now it is perfectly eight reps per inch. Let's see if I can bring this a little closer to show you. So I don't know if you can really see that, but it's exactly right on. So now that now that we have established the gauge, I'm just going to keep this thickness in my finger memory <laughs> as I go. And this is going to get a little bit easier the longer you, you practice this skill. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect and it can vary a little bit. Um, and if you need to, you can stop and check the gauge however frequently you want. So I'm just going to advance this a hook. I'm going to keep this gauge in mind as I spin. If it's been a while since I last spun, I'm going to check it more frequently just to make sure. Okay. Um, or if I've been spinning a really thin yarn lately, that will alter how, how um, natural this gauge is feeling to me. If I've been, thin, if I, if I've been spinning something very thin, this is going to feel extremely thick. And if I'm not diligent with making sure that this is the right gauge, then um, it's naturally going to get thinner. And the reverse is true. If I've been making a lot of fat yarns lately, um, it's like the memory that I have in my fingers, just feeling it. It's going to feel really, really too thin, and then in the end, it's going to be a little bit too thick for my project. So I like to err on caution and make sure that I check this frequently in the beginning and any time that I'm picking this up after a hiatus so maybe the last time I did this was two days ago I want to spend the first few minutes reacquainting myself with the yarn so that I'm spinning something very consistent but like I said it doesn't have to be perfect as can be witnessed by this little slub here <laughs> I don't know if that's um, extremely contrastive I need something black I'll use the back of my phone. It'll help. Yeah, you can see that little slub right there. That's totally fine. <laughs> it's going to add a little bit more visual interest to your yarn, but it's not going to be overpowering at all. All right. And I can feel that it's not taking the yarn in as fast as I want it to. So I'm going to increase it slightly and then keep going. All right. Check it again. Good. And every once in a while, it's nice to um, just ply it on itself like this to get a visual reinforcement of what it's going to look like. I think I gave the computer a brain freeze. <laughs> I was in the middle of explaining and it just died. <laughs> um, so because I have my sample yarn here, I can compare that with what I've spun. If I bring it up here, I can show you just how similar the yarns are. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to the day when I have a professional camera <laughs> and I don't have to do this by hand. But you can see how similar these two yarns are turning out to be. And that's because I'm following a very specific gauge. It's going to vary just a little bit, and that's fine. Remember, that's, that's the charm of hand spun. You want it to be a little bit original, a little bit unique, but not 
homemade. Right? So. Going to advance this. All right, and then I'm just going to keep spinning. And the goal is, I think, 200 yards for the finished product. It's about 160 grams of wool, which is around five ounces, five and a half ounces, I suppose. And um, we picked we picked a little bit more so that that little bit that we did in the beginning, that's going to be waste. You're not going to use that probably for your project. Um, if you want to spin up a sample, I conveniently already had one, but if you want to have a sample so that you can keep checking while you're spinning, um, you're going to use probably a quarter of an ounce to a half an ounce just getting that set up. So um, there's that, plus if you want to do a swatch to check your gauge, washing and blocking and all that stuff if you want, that's going to take up some more. Plus, if you're going to be changing the size or making any other alterations to it, you would rather have more yarn than not enough, right? So, I think I ended up having about seven and a half ounces for all of this. But, you know, it's just me being a little bit cautious. Now, I have a thin spot here, and I don't like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach the wool unspin just a little bit here then I'm going to overlap the end back onto the the yarn where it starts to thin out and I'm going to just sort of draft the, the little bit of yarn that I had the, the fiber that was attached with my fiber supply to thicken it up a little bit Like that. But like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, and it can be a little bit thin, a little bit thick, a little bit lumpy, a little bit bumpy. You can also even just do this as a single. It would still look really lovely that way as well. With all this talking, I forgot to advance my yarn. <laughs> so. This is how much we have done so far. This is how much we have left of our strip. We have the rest of the bat that we pulled the strip from, and then we have five more. <laughs> so um, I have a little bit of work ahead of me, and you have a little bit of work ahead of you getting all this spun. And uh, when we're ready, I'll come back, and I will show you how I'm going to apply this all together to make the yarn for the shrimp. All right. If you have any comments or questions, you can post those below. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully this will be a, a pretty nice shrug when we're all finished, right? So I'll have to post photos on Facebook when you're, when you're almost there. Um, you can also find me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. And you can also catch more on my blog. I'm probably going to post some pictures of uh, at least a few pictures maybe of various stages in this process uh, to provide a little extra insight because I can't always remember everything when I film and sometimes I miss things uh, when I'm talking because you know I start rambling and then sometimes you know when I post things on Facebook I don't want to write a book <laughs> so that's where, that's where it goes all on the blog so check that out when you have an opportunity and if there's anything else that I missed or if you have any questions or comments you can post below or you can even send me an email okay thanks for watching